Hi, this is Desi Flores. And Aaron Nemo. And we're going to show you the do's and don'ts of spotting at the gym. First, here's a quick video of some things you definitely never want to do. You have no business being on your phone when your workout partner is in the middle of a set. Eyes on the bar, be there, be available, be engaged, help your spot, help, help your partner through the exercise. You don't want to daydream, you don't want to get like too into conversation. Oh, I think it's so annoying when I'm at the gym and I'm in the middle of a set working out and somebody's like trying to hold a conversation with me. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Honestly, don't work out with me if you're that person. <laughs> you don't do that. No, like seriously, I don't like working out with people oh, in that I, way. I thought you were saying that I shouldn't work out with no, you no. because you, like, you never talk to me when I'm doing a set. <laughs> no, because even though they, uh, maybe you're not expecting them to respond to you when you think that you can talk to them while they're doing it, they're trying to concentrate on the workout. They need to tell you, hey, you know, for me, I always tell people when they're spotting me, Unless you really see me struggling, I like to say now or help. And that means when they come in to help me so that they're never too soon or too late. Uh, so they need to be right there ready, number one. And number two, they can't be talking to me for me to be able to do that. And that messes up my um, mind and muscle concentration. And then spotting someone way more than they need it. <laughs> I feel like girls are victim to this all the time. They'll ask a guy to, to help, help them like spot me when I need it. And then it's just like taking all the weight off of you the entire set and it's like, oh, okay. The opposite of what you want from, <laughs> yeah. getting, from getting a, a spot partner. Also, or, or just, you know, even if they give you like the right amount of difference in the weight, it's just like stepping in when you're not needed yet because like we, we re you really want to feel that failure first. You really want to feel like you really need it and you get just the right amount to allow you to get those extra reps. So you don't want to step in too soon and you also don't want to step in too late, which is your pet peeve. So now we're gonna transition into some of our key exercises that we want you guys to understand. Proper technique uh, with spotting and then maybe some ways that you should not be spotting with these exercises. So, okay, since we were squatting in the last video, we wanted to go ahead and start off with squats, which is a really important workout and something where you can actually injure your back. So it's really important to spot correctly. And there's a couple different ways. I'm gonna show you the way that I like to be uh, spotted and then the way that Aaron likes to spot. So what you never wanna do when you're helping somebody squat, when you're spotting somebody when they're squatting, is you never wanna to touch the weight. That's a workout where you leave the weight alone because they're, they're balancing themselves and by touching the weight, you can throw off their balance, which is exactly what you don't wanna do. Yes, 100%. And you, can, you notice in the video, you know, I'm pulling up on the weight, trying to be a good spotter and completely threw her off balance because naturally her shoulders want to go forward while she's squatting and I'm pushing them back. No bueno. Another thing with that is, I mean, if you're lifting heavier and heavier weight, somebody's not really going to be able to like lift that with their hands. Yeah. So it throws off the spotting. Whereas if you're spotting somebody correctly and you're using their body to do it, you can really help them to keep their form and even when they have a, a large amount of weight. Exactly. All right, let's jump into the do's. So starting with Desiree's um, spotting technique of choice on squats. This is a great spotting technique, you know, just for any working set. Someone needs a spot, they, they hit a rep where you can tell that they're struggling, you're there to help, hands on the hips. Yep, and you just uh, kind of like squeeze them together a little bit, not too rough, and then you use your muscles to help them help lift them up. And so then the technique that I prefer, um, this one would be more applicable for someone that definitely needs a spot. They've communicated that to you. They're about to attempt some heavy weight on squats. 
Um, I position myself one arm wrapped around their waist and then one arm supporting on their back. And I stay in this position throughout the entire set. So I'm providing stability for their core. I'm making sure that their shoulders don't fall forwards. Um, and I'm just there and I can apply more pressure and help more as needed throughout the set. So both methods work and you can see what method that you prefer, either are fine. And then just make sure too is that if you know, if you're spotting somebody, that you always help them put their weight back. You don't just help them get up and then walk away. You want to make sure that you kind of stay near them until the weight's already off them. Bicep curls, starting out with the don't. So, definitely a pet peeve of mine. You know, you have someone that's working out with you. They notice that you need a spot. They jump in and they're helping way too much. And not only that, but they're stealing your negative. I will get mad so fast when someone steals my negative. So you have, you have to be very careful when you're spotting someone. Only help them as needed. You know, for me, I maybe only needed help for the last 50% of that curl up to, up to the top. And then let go. You don't have to help me on the way down. Let me have that negative. That's, that's half of the exercise is the negative range of motion. I want to feel that all by myself. As I'm going up, on a bicep curl, that's gonna be primarily where I'm struggling, where I need assistance. Um, but the negative on the way down, you know, if you are assisting me a lot on that, I'm not gonna feel that negative at all. So my bicep's gonna completely disengage and I'm losing time under tension. You want your, you want your muscles to be engaged throughout the entire exercise, so if your partner steals your negative, your muscles are gonna relax, ruins your set, Right, and that goes for all your workouts. So we use the bicep curls as an example, but you always, you never want to steal somebody's negative, obviously, in any workout. Yeah, now for the correct way to spot somebody, to spot someone on bicep curls. Um, so one thing that we, that we demonstrated in this video is only stepping in to spot on the bicep curl whenever they ask for it. Otherwise, you're standing right between them and the mirror. You're blocking the mirror. You're blocking the mirror. You know you want to stare at your biceps when you're doing <laughs> curls, come on. So I hollered, she came over, and she was pretty much just helping me for the last 50% range of motion, hand under my palm, giving me just enough push until I was all the way up to the peak of the rep, and I could squeeze, and then I was controlling the negative on my own. I didn't even follow through, so I wasn't really following him up. It was more like a push. Yeah, just a small push. Just, yeah, just a, a small amount. Yeah, so just filling it out, whatever your partner needs. Never more than enough. But you should never need to do it the whole workout. One, two, three, you got this. Four, five. Or they're lifting too much weight. Yeah, you should. Or unless be. it's like their last set, and you know, and then maybe yeah. they fatigued faster. Next workout is a military press. And one of the things you never want to do when you're spotting somebody is already start helping them before they even need the help. So in this one, he started helping me. I didn't say anything. I didn't say I needed help. I wasn't struggling at all. And he immediately just started kind of doing the workout for me, which is makes my workout absolutely pointless. So you always want to make sure that you have some kind of a system and it's different for everybody. Yeah, it's good to have open communication with your workout partner uh, or else there's going to be some frustrations. Set the ground rules. Let them know, this is what I need to say, or this is what you need to see before you can spot me. And this is how I like to be spotted. That's another thing on, uh, on shoulder press when you're spotting. You know, are you spotting them from the wrists? Or are you spotting them from the elbows? Communication. All right, so proper technique on spotting from military press. So pretty much the exact opposite. She, she communicated to me when she needed help. She started a struggle, she let me know I need a spot. So I came in, was just giving just enough love on the elbows at the bottom to keep her moving. And so you wanna stand behind your workout partner the entire time. Um, just, you know, kinda like be ready, be alert. And then once you start seeing them struggling a little bit, maybe like keep your hands right here below them. Not, I hate when somebody hasn't there the whole time. So just once you start seeing them struggling, you put your arms like just a little bit underneath their elbows or I guess their 
be ready to grab their wrist depending on how they like to be spotted and then just step in when you're needed. All right, this one's actually kind of, uh, pretty hilarious. Okay, so how not to spot on pull-ups. So some people need a spot for the entire pull-up exercise because they're not ready for pull-ups on their own yet. Um, I am able to do some pull-ups on my own. So once I reach fatigue, kick the legs back. Now here's what not to do. Your role as the partner is not to press their legs up towards the ceiling. Yeah, I almost, I almost uh, let go of the bar there and face planted. <laughs> <laughs> and this has really happened to me. You don't want to like actually help them do the pull up by lifting their feet up and down. You're not helping them. You're throwing them off balance. So you definitely, you don't want to move your arms up and down at all. I've actually had this happen to me and it, it just, you're not going to be able to work out right. So what you do want to do is all you want to do is provide, think about a machine. When you're on the machine, the machine, you're pushing off of it, right? So you just give them something to push off of so they can use a little bit of their own leg muscle to assist them just the right amount that they know they need to help them in the pull-up. Perfect. Boom. I barely felt any, so when I was assisting him, I could feel he was barely using it, so he only needed a little bit of help. If he would have needed more, he could have pushed off harder. Exactly. That allows the person doing the exercise to control you know, how much help is being used. Because you only want to use as much help as needed, because what's the actual goal of an exercise? To fatigue your muscle as much as possible. It's not to get through a certain amount of reps. So if your partner is helping too much, or you're helping yourself too much, you're defeating the purpose of the exercise. All right, so in this workout, you actually need somebody to spot you in order to be able to do it. Yeah, so with this exercise, in order to get the full range of motion required with this exercise, it requires a spotter. So the person performing the exercise is gonna go all the way up. As far as you can. Yeah. And then your partner's gonna like push you past the point where you could normally lift to. And so as they push you up, you have to catch it so you don't let your arms fall. And so that in your negative, it kind of gives you a little bit more difficulty. Yeah. And you have to go, you want to do this really slow on your way down. Almost exaggerate how slow you're going. So you don't want to spot someone from the elbows. Notice in the proper spotting example, I spotted at the wrists. That's going to help her to engage the rear delts. Um, whenever you spot someone from the elbows on a rear delt exercise, it's going to force them to bend their elbows, which is actually going to contract more rhomboids than rear delts. Last but not least, bench press. All right, so what not to do when you're spotting your friend on bench press? You never want to ruin this workout for a guy. It's just like the <laughs> easiest thing to make a guy get mad at you when you're spotting them at the gym and you mess up their bench press. When your bro stops texting you, when you ask him to work out with you, you screwed up on chest day, you know why. Okay, so check it out. When you're spotting someone on bench, you have to make sure you're spotting them evenly, which means your hand placement on the bar is very important. Make sure that whenever you're pulling up on the weight, you're not throwing him off balance, him or her off balance. Place your hands evenly on the bar um, you know, just like any other exercise, only help as much as needed. You're not jerking the weight off of them. And, you know, pr pulling up evenly with your hands, hands evenly on the bar. Otherwise, there's going to be possibly an injury or a disaster. And again, communication comes in on this one. You're behind them the entire time, you're watching them, because this is something, another workout where somebody could really injure themselves. So you want to help them with the lift off usually as you get into higher uh, sets. And so you want to communicate that they say three, two, one, and you lift up on the one, you know, exactly when they want you to lift. You want to make sure that you help them re-rack the weight after and communicate when they want you to step in. And, and oftentimes too, Aaron will tell me like, I want to do three more. Yeah. Or like, or even sometimes before we even start the workout, he'll tell me what his goal is so that I know how many more he's going to do. So either way, whether it's during the workout or before the workout, it's good to communicate how many more reps that, that you want. Yeah, and I love doing that because then my workout partner can push me to get extra reps. Like if I can only do six on my more, sorry, if I can only do six on my own, then my workout partner is yelling in my ear, let's go, two more, two more, you got this. 
and they're assisting me to get to more. So always setting a goal, your workout partner is helping you hit that goal. Yeah, and sometimes I don't even know if I can lift a certain amount of weight at all and I wanna try it. So if I have like Aaron with me, I'll say, hey, you know what, I don't know if I can lift this at all, so just really pay attention because I'm gonna try it. Yeah. And then they know to really be alert because that's a lot of weight for you. So communication is everything. So this is Desi Flores. And Aaron Nimmo. And these are do's and don'ts of how to spot at the gym so that you can have a good workout partner that knows how to spot you right and you can increase your muscle a lot faster and get a lot bigger. And keeping you guys from getting injuries in the gym. So comment below if there's anything else that you guys wanna see. Make sure you subscribe to each of our channels. More content coming your way.